Well, again, I have to write mine out so I won't forget anything, so I'll just read it. Um, this is my tribute to Donnie, and um, he was such an ordinary, uh, such an extraordinary person. I wish you all could have known him. I know there's some here do, who didn't know him very well. And uh, he was the baby of our family and was teased unmercifully as a child about being the baby. Now, somebody was talking about Jimmy teasing Bernice saying, kitty, kitty, kitty. We told Donnie, baby. Mother would make us quit, so we'd just move our lips. <laughs> so we picked on him to see him lose his temper because uh, he was wild when he lost his temper and uh, when he was mad. And as he got a little older, he controlled his temper, so we quit picking on him. He became the sweetest little boy with consideration for others, just so sweet. He had a beautiful young voice, and when we asked him to, he would sing Beautiful Dreamer to us, and he could go high, and he just know, Beautiful Dreamer, <laughs> you know, like a little old boy, just so sweet. And uh, he sang it for us whenever we asked. He later, I think, became the best friend of all, all of his siblings. Uh, but there's just so much to tell about him that he was just so remarkable that I hardly know where to start. He had so many talents. He worked so hard. He had a great sense of humor. And he was just such a very compassionate person. I'll tell you of some of his most outstanding attributes, his work ethic and helping others and thinking over everything about him. I, I tried to think what I want to talk about, what, what stands out. That seemed to stand out more than his other uh, attributes. Same, and I'll start with his work. At about 10 years old, Donnie started working with Dad and the older brothers doing manual labor. Uh, well, doing the labor of an adult, actually. Um, he would go out with them on these construction jobs. It may be stucco in houses, painting, whatever. And no one made him go. He wanted to work with them. He continued to work with them uh, in construction till up into his teens. Of course, this was after school. He played football. He did the usual things and maybe some little menial jobs on the side for neighbors or different ones. But he hung in there in the hard work. And uh, on up to 17, he went to work for a lumber company. I think Leon may have gotten him a job because Leon worked at this lumber company. And he did various jobs there, like including driving a truck, truckloads of lumber on short and long hauls. And uh, he married at 21, and oftentimes after that, held both a night job and a day job. Uh, Donnie was a people person, as they say. He knew how to deal with people, how to talk to people, and he was compassionate with friends and people. Uh, his knack for dealing with people helped him to be successful in his work and to move up in managing a prosperous business where he worked until retirement. Uh, he was everybody's right-hand man. Everyone called on him uh, when they needed someone strong to help them. He moved Mother's large library numerous times. Couldn't count the times he moved it for me. Uh, and he helped different, fams and different friends and families move from one house to another. Landscape yards, did house repairs for family, and detailed cars for the public. This is all in addition to a regular job. He always loved helping others. This is the other thing I wanted to point out is how he helped other people. During Donnie's early childhood, few people in our neighborhood uh, had cars. As Donnie saw a neighbor coming down the street carrying groceries, he must have been like eight or 10, I guess. Uh, if he saw him coming down the street carrying groceries, he ran two or three blocks to meet them uh, and carried their groceries home for them. Uh, the elderly neighbors loved him. Uh, they liked for him to come visit them. I can see him now, this elderly man, say, hey, come sit with me. He'd go sit on the porch and this guy would get his pocket knife collection and go over all of his pocket knives with Donnie, you know. <laughs> and um, one Saturday when Donnie, this is a, a story I thought was cute. One Saturday when Donnie was about uh, nine years old, I suppose, he found a billfold in the downtown area. This was on a Saturday when everybody went down there. It had money in it. He had never had money. Uh, 
he knew he needed some new khakis. His were probably worn out and too little, I don't know. But he went, first thing he did with this billfold is go to a department store and buy, bought himself a badly needed new suit of khakis. <laughs> so then he gathered his friends, all of his little friends, took them to a movie and bought them all popcorn. <laughs> when he went home, of course, Dad called the owner of the billfold and the man came after his billfold, but he would not accept uh, reimbursement for the money Donnie spent. Uh, he got a kick out of the way Donnie spent it. So, because <laughs> he's just a little tight. <laughs> well, mother died when Donnie was 18 and still living at home. He had his hands full with dad. He came, I was there one day when he came home from work at lunchtime, cooked dad's lunch, and tried to console him. <coughs> dad was walking the yard crying and all this. And Donnie was trying to console him, and what he was doing is frying potatoes and peeling potatoes and frying them, cooking them for their lunch, and trying to console Dad and get back, up, back to work on time. Those were tough times for both Donnie and Dad. And during Donnie's early marriage, he went next door every morning before going to work and shaved a disabled man. <coughs> he sometimes helped him in other ways, too. Uh, he just had a soft spot in his heart for the elderly. He made routine visits to nursing homes he, he would tell me some of the cute things that the elderly people said. He just loved the little things that they'd tell him, you know. And uh, Donnie worked with hundreds of people uh, through AA. He went out any time he was needed, sometimes in the middle of the night, even though he had to work the next day, but he never spoke of it to anyone. Um, shortly before he retired, he told me there were several disabled, <coughs> I really don't remember if he said uh, mentally retarded or physically disabled or just, I mean, mentally repair, impaired or how, how they were disadvantaged, but anyway, they were. Uh, they came to work at an industry that didn't open until they were probably using public transportation or something and they uh, there before their business opened. And so Donnie noticed them and he invited them into his office to where it was warm. and. Uh, they showed such appreciation that he started giving them coffee in the mornings and he said <coughs> they just really did show a lot of appreciation and appreciated it and enjoyed it and he started taking some of them home after work and then later Donnie was given a sofa um, I think somebody was closing out some houses or something had an extra sofa and he knew that one of these men needed a sofa so he took it to him and he told me that he was so appreciative and just could not thank him enough. He just knew people's needs and just did everything he could to help people. But um, I know that it w he was gratified by it as much as the people he helped. And he just spent his life helping others, but his love and time for his family always came first. But I know there's people out here that could add some of the things they remember. I tried to think of the things, but I've been away from having lived close to Donnie for so long to hear of a lot of the things he did. <coughs> Is there anyone out here that'd like to add? Could I ask you a question? Yes. We heard in, in Maryland that Donnie had, at one point, Donnie was working for an oxygen company, and he was crushed between the plat unloading platform and a, and a truck that was backing up. What can mm -hmm. you tell us about that? Well, actually, Glennis could tell more about it than I could. I don't, I don't remember other than uh, just what you said. And uh, can you repeat the question? Because the uh, Vita was asking about. They heard in Maryland that Donnie was working. I think he was probably helping where he worked to load oxygen tanks. Sometime he helped do. He did that sometime, and that he was crushed between a truck and an oxygen the tank. Truck and the platform where they. Platform and the truck. Uh, Glennis, did he, what? It didn't hurt him at all. It did not hurt him at all. Just sore. Just sore. Well, but he, we just assumed he wasn't hurt seriously because we never heard anything else. Nobody followed up on it. Uh huh. But well, and he had had some back surgery from uh, overextending himself, doing things that he, like shorthanded loading trucks on the dock. He, in his place of business, He'd go in if the floors need mopping, he'd mop them. If the bathrooms need clean, he'd clean them. He had a better rapport with any of the clients than he could collect money from them that the managers couldn't collect. So 
because he could deal with them and had a rapport for it with them. So the manager, the owner, just turned it over to him to manage. But uh, does anybody else have a? I see a hand. If I promise not to cry, can I? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I need to go up there. Come over here. I'll, I'll relinquish my. You just sit down. I'll, I'll just stand. I relinquish my you throne. No, you just hold it. I just. Okay. How's that? Good. Maybe upside down. Anyway, y'all know I'm Mike Richardson, Desi's, but <clears throat> Uncle Donnie was very, very special to me. Uh, and uh, as as y'all heard my mother say, her mother said to her, "Take care of Donnie," yeah. and my mother tried to do that. And so we had a, a great rapport with Donnie. Donnie had a, a special place in my mom and dad's heart. Both my dad thought the world of Donnie uh, and I can speak from personal experience that Donnie was always there when you needed him no matter what time it was uh, a lot of people and this is not an AA meeting but I, I'm I'm an alcoholic and Donnie knew that and Donnie knew how to work with me and he, he never ever said no but he never ever forced anything and uh, <clears throat> The thing I loved about Donnie is just his common sense, but the main thing I loved about him was his love for his family. His family came first, foremost, and he would talk to me. Most of y'all know how Leon was, you know. It, it had to make sense and it had to make money, you know. <laughs> and, and, and what I appreciated about Donnie is it didn't. It didn't have to make sense, and it didn't matter about money. Family came first to him. and. Uh, Donnie was always, even as a little guy, he was kind of my idol. You know, he lived down the street, had Baldy, had the horse, had the cowboy hat, had the good looks, you know, and, and uh, I loved him. You know, in fact, uh, we lived just down the street from where they did when I was probably three years old. And I, I, was, I was playing like an old elm branch was a cigar. And I was standing waiting for Uncle Donnie was supposed to come and take me for a ride on a bicycle. And when he pulled up, I got so excited, the porch was so... Tall, I, I took off and I tumbled and I, I stuck that stick right in the roof of my mouth. <laughs> and it scared him so he picked me up and ran down to the, their house, got the old Studebaker and took me to the hospital. But uh, <clears throat> Donnie, as, as I said, is, is uh, you guys that didn't really, really get to know Donnie, Donnie was the baby, but, but he wasn't. I, I'm telling you, he was part of the glue that held a lot of the siblings together. Everybody talked to Donnie. Everybody loved Donnie, and Donnie was a place they could go. Uh, I was just 12 years old, and Donnie gave me an opportunity to work with him. And I want to tell you, you're talking about work. The man would work you plumb to death, <laughs> completely to death. And <clears throat> we worked for Uncle Toby at one time. We set those, the, the gravestones out in the cemetery. Donnie had come get me, and Toby had sent us out there and tell us which ones to put in and all that, and, and I'm telling you, we worked. You didn't mess around, and we thought we would have them perfect. And we called Toby out there, and Toby said, that didn't work the shit, you know. <laughs> Make us start all over, you know. And Donnie never said a word. It's just like, let's do it again, you know. So I learned a lot of those things. You know, Donnie was nearly a complete opposite of my dad. And my, I, I loved my dad, learned a lot of things, but Donnie equalized Thing. So I was very appreciative and thankful to the Lord that I had an opportunity to have an uncle like that. Good, Michael, thanks. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? I want just one very short thing. Okay. Let me get your pincher on. <laughs> Can I just hold it? I have don't to know. clip it on. Richard said you had to pinch it on. <laughs> 